Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics and the video question line. Today's topic is on reference dimensions and true profile. So today's question that was submitted is if a diameter is in reference on the drawing, does that make the GDT under the diameter callout a reference dimension as well? So here's an example of a reference dimension with a geometric tolerance attached to it. So typically what we do see is the lack of parentheses here, and then we have some sort of plus minus or tolerance that follows the size dimension. And then we control the position or perpendicularity or some geometric control to that feature of size that has a size tolerance. However, sometimes there are situations where the feature that we are controlling the location of needs to have a reference size dimension. In other words, no tolerance. It's just a reference uh, on the size of it. Uh, so we'll show you one of those examples here. Let's say we have this part here who has a diameter of 5.330 plus or minus 5 thousandths. And it's being controlled with position back to A, B, C. A being the surface here, B the surface over here, and C this surface down here. So we get a 0, 0, 0 down in the corner. And we're controlling the location to that reference point. Uh, and we're also controlling the size of this feature, right? So we're controlling the size of that feature. And those of you that know rule number one for GED and T know that size also controls the form. So we're controlling size and form with this size dimension here. And we're controlling the location and orientation with this position callout right here. So we've fully defined sloth, size, location, orientation, and form, all four elements that any feature, surface, or feature of size needs to have locked down in order to be fully constrained. Uh, so we've locked down all of that for this one part in this one feature. Now this is an underdefined drawing, but let's just uh, focus on this through hole for now. So we fully defined the location, orientation, size, and form of that through hole. But if we introduce another part, and it has its own datum reference frame, and let's say these two holes are being located to A, B, and C to this datum reference frame, A being this top surface here, B is this side surface here, and C is this lower surface here. Now we've constrained both of those holes to each other as well as the rest of the datum reference frame. Uh, and this part is completely separate from this part. Two separate parts until we weld them together. Now in a weldment drawing, and again, this drawing is incomplete, we'd probably see some weld symbols on here, but uh, we would see the location of this part with respect to this part in some sort of manner, right? There's going to be some sort of important function of the features on this part with respect to the features on this part. That's why we're welding them together. Uh, and when this weldment goes into the final assembly, wherever it does go, uh, we likely care about the location of some of these features with respect to some of these features as well. And that's exactly what we see here in this example assembly drawing where the two parts meet. So here we've re-identified both of these holes, which were previously controlled in location to the datum reference frame of its own part. But now we're using those holes in reference as a datum feature. So we're referencing those. Uh, they're previously controlled in size and checked in a previous measurement. So there's no need to check the size and put a tolerance on this. They've already been checked. Now, if it's some sort of processing that might distort those holes or uh, sheet metal bending that's going to distort them, if the processing that combines these two components together might change the shape or size of things, then by all means, you certainly want to add uh, a tolerance size to this size dimension as well because things might have changed during this process in this assembly. Uh, so for this case, we've decided that it wasn't going to change. Whatever we recorded for size here is certainly good enough to continue on here. So we've referenced that as well. These two are identified as a datum feature B and datum feature A is this back surface over here. And so what we have now is this large diameter referencing this surface over here from this part and the two holes from that part in trying to control the location of this through hole. What this is doing is locating this hole with respect to this part. And that's exactly how this part functions. And now when we weld this together, we can check this part with respect to this part. And just like we saw in these two holes, we don't need to check that diameter again because we're confident the process, the welding, whatever is gonna happen, uh, is not going to change the size of this hole. And so we don't need to re-measure this. We can quickly just reference that diameter, but we do care about the position of that hole with respect to these features now.
So hopefully that helps clarify when you're going to see a reference dimension on a drawing that also has some sort of geometric tolerances associated with it. Our goal is to be your best source for GD&T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GD&T and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.